Well, it is truly a joy and a privilege to be with you all this morning. I've looked out and I see a couple smiling faces. Hopefully by the end of the service, there'll be more than just a couple. Uh, I'm sure it's obvious at this point. If not, I pray that your eyes will be opened uh, and you realize that the pastor's not here. Amen. I know he misses you all this morning. Uh, he's up at his father's church preaching, I know, a wonderful message this morning, and that church will be truly blessed to have him there, and I know you all miss him as well. And I will do my best with the Lord's help to ensure that you leave here, I hope, happier than what you came. I uh, hope not worse, um, but I really count it a blessing. It's a joy to have some of my, uh, some church family with me this morning from years ago, Tammy and her husband Larry, and another Tammy and her husband Lloyd. So it's good to have them in service with us this morning, and it's a joy to see each one of you all this morning. In the midst of everything, it, this is a great crowd. It's not a full crowd, but it is a good crowd of people. And as I begin to speak, I see more smiles coming to your faces. So I trust that everybody's doing good this morning. Amen? Uh, if you have your Bibles, if you're in Sunday school, you know we're going to be in Acts chapter 17. But for those of you all that missed out on Sunday school, uh, come to Sunday school. You get some depth uh, to the messages. Uh, but Acts chapter 17 will be where we're rereading at this morning. And um, we'll be talking about God doesn't social distance. I, I didn't hear anybody gasp. I didn't have anybody hear anybody lose their breath on that one. But believe it or not, God does not practice social distancing. Um, I pray that uh, nobody gets upset at that and turns him in. Um, but um, he's, he's not going to do it. All right? But that's where we're going to be at this morning. I appreciate Ray's putting that together. That looks really good. Um, phenomenal job. Um, I pray the message will be just as good nothing else, you'd be left with a, a good impression of realizing that God does not social distance. Amen. Acts chapter 17. Let me get there first. I'm still in our Sunday school references. Acts chapter 17, it says, Then Paul stood in the midst of Mars Hill and said, Ye men of Athens, I perceive that in all things ye are too superstitious. For as I passed by and beheld your devotions, I found an altar with this inscription to the unknown God, whom therefore ye ignorantly worshipped him, declare I unto you. God could be known. Verse 24 says, And God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is the Lord of heaven and earth, dwelling not in temples made with hands, Neither is worshipped with men's hands as though he needed anything, seeing that he giveth to all life and breath and all things, and hath made one blood all nations of men for to dwell on the face on all the face of the earth, and hath determined the time before appointed and the bounds of their habitation that they should seek the Lord, if happily they might feel after him and find him, though he be not far from every one of us. Verse 28 says, For in him we live and move and have our being, and in, as certain also of your, your, <clears throat> of your own prophets have said, for, he, for we are also his offspring. Praise the Lord for his word. Let us pray. Well, we are truly grateful. You count it truly an honor and a privilege to open your word this morning and to read the contents thereof. Lord, we know that your word is alive and well, and it can speak to the utter darkest, most part of our hearts. We pray, dear God, me being merely a mouthpiece for your kingdom and for your glory, that you would speak to your people this morning in a profound and in a great way, that you would move amongst each pew, amongst each seat, and you would speak to each one of us in a way that not only will transform our lives, but will transform the lives of those that we come in contact with. We praise you for this word and ask for your presence to be known here today. 
And if there be any lost in this church this morning, dear God, they would come to know you before this service is up. We pray and give you all the glory for everything in Jesus' name. Amen. As we see here, they had this inscription to the unknown God. God can be known. We also see that God does not dwell uh, in temples made with hands. God does not merely dwell in a building. But uh, he can be felt outside of here. And um, I'm not sure about you. I trust that you're as well uh, excited the fact that we get to assemble together in this place under one roof. And you've grown a great appreciation of this right here. Well, I know we've had television evangelism. We've had social media. We've been fortunate to be able to go live. I know we're live this morning. But there's just something about us coming together on one roof in the faith and opening the word of God and singing hymns and songs unto the Lord. There's just something about being together. Amen. I understand that in the in midst of this, we was fortunate to adopt like the parking lot services. Our pastor was able to get that going, and it was phenomenal. And I praise the Lord for that because we only missed one service, one Sunday between... The shutdown, we had one service, and then we went right in the parking lot. That was awesome. But in the midst of this pandemic, in the midst of all this social distancing, I can't help but realize that some of the things that I've struggled with, and maybe you've struggled with as well, some of the emotional um, and mental strains that we faced in the midst of this pandemic. Some of the people that we love the most dearly, we've had to stay away from. We've had to distance ourselves from. And to be honest with you, it's been very painful. My boys and me, uh, I love my grandmother. They love their great-grandmother, their granny. Um, and we haven't seen her as much as we'd like to in the midst of this. I understand that even in the midst of opening of the door, so to speak, and allowing us to assemble here together this morning, there's still some that are still distant just from church. But one of the things I began to realize in the midst of all this is that maybe I was the only one, but I distanced myself from God. Maybe you found yourself in the same seat. You know, we don't have Wednesday services. What are we occupying our Wednesdays with? We, don't have, we didn't have Sunday school up until a couple months ago or a month ago. What was we doing with that extra time? And for me personally, I went two months where my schedule was completely wiped out. No evangelism. Churches was closed. No jail. We currently still do not have the jail ministry open back up. So me and a couple other guys, I mean, we was busy doing that, and I was busy evangelizing and stuff like that. A lot of outreaches here at the church. So in the midst of all this, we've grown a distance from God. But he has not distanced himself from us. He can be known this morning. If you don't know him, you can come to know him before the service is over with. Maybe you have felt isolated. And closed off, but maybe some of your family members. But most importantly, one of my fears is maybe you feel isolated and closed off from God. And uh, he's here for you this morning. You know, in the midst of this as assembling, I, my prayer is that we realize how valuable these moments really are. As the word of God says that we should assemble ourselves together more so as we see the day approaching. That these is very valuable. I don't know, but we've invited people to church. I'm like, oh, I can watch it on television. And you've maybe had the opportunity to watch it on television. That's awesome. As I shared with Sunday School this morning, if you are a huge fan of the burger joint out on the hill, uh, I don't have to want to do any advertisements, but if you want to go to that specific place and they close their doors, I trust that you're not going to choose never to eat again. You might go to the place that offers tacos. Or you might go to the place that offers chicken. I personally like chicken. But if they choose to 
close up the chicken joints, guess what? I'm going to find something to eat because I like to eat. Amen. Just because they close the church does not leave me or us with the entitlement that we can distance ourselves from God. And as I've shared, I fell victim to that. There's a lot of hours that goes into studying for a message. We do like 30, 35 minutes of a message, and that's it. There's a lot more to it than that. There's hours of studying. And guess what my hours of studying consisted of? That's the clicking of the remote. Because there's nothing on television. There's nothing on television. But you would sit there and you would click for hours on end trying to find something to occupy your time. Am I right? We don't have to give the devil much space. We don't have to give him six feet. We give him an inch. And I can assure you that he'll take a mile. Amen. As we begin to dive into this passage, we see so many wonderful things God begins to teach us in his word. And, and he, he says, gave to all, everybody. He gave everyone the breath of life. And he goes on to say that, you know, some of the struggles, you know, when we don't talk to each other, guess what? Somebody tries to talk, and guess what? A lot of times it's not the truth. You ever had somebody tell you something, but by the time it gets back around to you, it's got 15,000 things added to it? The devil is a liar. And I can't imagine some of the things that's been lied about the church, about you as an individual, maybe even about your relationship with God, because you're not applying yourselves. You're, not, you're, you're allowing this distance to take place between you and God. I can't imagine what fills that void. What's being said? I have a, this is a personal thing. I had the privilege last Sunday, because I've been out evangelizing. Side note, before we go any further. First time in this sanctuary since March. Apart from our D group meeting we had. But for sitting in these pews, I had not sat in them since March. And there's a lot of you all that I had not seen. Some of which I count very valuable. In my relationship, I count you all valuable. Uh, but there's some that really stands out that I really desire to speak to. Desire to get a high from or a wave. We all have somebody like that. And I think to myself, like, man, I can't imagine what people, what the devil's tried to do with some of our relationships. But I, I walked in, and it was almost as if I'd never left. I looked at the back, and I seen Steve. I don't want to single out Steve, but I, I count his relationship valuable. I count Bruce and all of y'all valuable. But I look back, and he put up a big hand to wave. That was so precious. Because I, I, I love, you, love you guys, but there's some of you I've never seen. I didn't walk up to your cars. I could have, but I didn't. Imagine what gets said when we begin to distance ourselves from God. You're not valuable. He doesn't care about you. This wouldn't be happening if God was near you. All, begin, all these lies begin to develop and take place. But he goes on to tell us here in 26, and we see some of the lies and we see some of the fruit of those lies with the vandalism and the rioting and some of the Dreadful things that's taken place in the midst of all this because people is just separating themselves from each other. They're separating themselves from the truth. And it says here that he made one blood all the nations of men to dwell on. It doesn't matter the race. It doesn't matter your nationality or what part of the world that you live in. God is wanting to be next to you. He wants to be near you. He's not favoring this side of the church opposed to this side. This side don't have as many people. You think God's, I'm just going to go over here. This is where the crowd's at. No, he's with all of us. He goes on to tell us there, he says, that you might feel after him and find him, though he be not far from every one of us. Now, you may not, I may not be close to my grandma. I may not be close to my mom and dad. I may not be close to certain siblings. 
I don't have, there's some friends that I, unless I get on a plane, I can't go to them. And even in the midst of this, I've heard stories after stories, marriages and funerals, graduations, everything has been shut down. I can't imagine what people's going through. To lose somebody that you love most dearly, but you can't go and visit them unless you're immediate family. I was at a church a while back, and there's a, a, a husband that has his wife in the nursing home. His wife of 30-some years, and he can't go and be with her. He has to talk to her through a glass or six feet with masks. I understand and respect all those decisions. But you know that's tough. And it's very tough when we implement that to our relationship with God. I come into every service, no matter if I'm doing good or if I'm doing bad. I come in saying, Lord, I need you. As the old song says, I need thee every hour. Amen. I need him. We need him. As we talked about in Sunday school, the pagan worship that began to take place, and Paul was confronting this, and I trust that if you, if you wasn't in Sunday school, you missed a very good message. Uh, I know I needed it, uh, but there's so many things that could conflict this relationship with God, but it's good for us to be close to God. The Bible tells us in Psalms chapter 73, verse 27 and 28, says, For lo, they that are far from thee shall perish. Thou hast destroyed all them that go a-whoring from thee. But it is good for me to draw near to God. I have put my trust in the Lord, that I might declare all thy works. In other words, six feet is too much. In the days and the times that we live in, it's easy for us to straddle the fence or play games with this relationship with God. But I fell victim, and I trusted if given the opportunity, you would testify the same. The times when you distance yourself from God and how things didn't quite work out. When marriages and relationships begin to distance themselves, it's only a matter of time again you begin to see the fruits of some of the things that slip in and cause even a greater gap. Maybe some of you all had some great high school friends. But life takes its toll, right? And you're no longer as close as you once was. Same things can happen with our relationship with God. In fact, he tells us here in this passage, for, for lo, they are that are far from thee shall what? Shall perish. All over in the midst of all this, there's a seemingly, I've experienced an unseen darkness that's beginning to lurk into marriages, lurks into the parenting and their children. There's an unseen darkness I've seen that's crept within the churches. People are not as passionate as zealous and longful of being in the house of God as they once was. It seemed like there's a, just a, a lukewarmness that's taken place. And I love my wife. But I could be honest with you. When I begin to distance myself from her. When I allow other things to creep in. If I were to do that. That beauty. That relationship. That, that connection that we have would not be as strong. As he begins to talk about here, destroy all them that go a whoring from thee. In other words, having other lovers outside of the true love that we have for God. As we talked in Sunday school, I'm trusting that there's probably been a lot of loves that's developed in your time. Maybe it's just not the clicking of the television. Maybe there's something else that's took the place of Wednesday nights. Maybe there's something else that's took the place of Sunday, Sunday school. 
You're leaving a distance. But God does not distance himself from us. This morning we talk about call upon God. We need to call upon God. We can call upon God. You know that? We know Jesus Christ this morning. Guess what? We got his number. We can call him up. There's a song back in the day that I'd heard. Call him up. Call him up. Tell him what you want. I need you, God. I need you. I love this quote I came across. However softly we speak, God is near enough to hear us. Think about that. I've got a mic on, but if I whisper, I'm not sure if everybody hears me. I guess you do. We, no matter how much, the person right next to you this morning, they're sitting next to you because I hope they like you. They're wanting to get within six feet. Amen. But there's some things that they don't know. You know that? There's so many times I've sat next to my wife and some of the pain, some of the heartache that I've experienced, she doesn't even know. We've held hands. We've held each other. But still don't quite know what you're really going through. God's near enough to you. He has not distanced himself for you. From you, he knows exactly what you're going through, and he's still right here. Call upon him. Call upon him. Psalms 145 and 18 says, The Lord is nigh, in other words, he is close, unto all them that call upon him, to all that call upon him in truth. Keyword truth. We can call upon him. You know that? Hebrews 10 and 22 says, let us draw near. In other words, let us draw close to God. With a true heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. James 4, 8 says, draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts. You double-minded. You see the common thread in the midst of all this? There's two things that we can highlight through these three passages specifically. One, you can call upon God. Two, you got to get clean. There's a cleansing. A right heart, a truth heart. A lot of people ask, but they ask amiss. They ask for their own good, their own benefit, for their own pleasure. I can't ask God to come to the table like, God, come, be with me. But come and be with me on my terms. God doesn't play that role. I come to God as I am under his rules. I don't jurisdict what God does. God jurisdicts what I do as an individual. As we talked in Sunday school, there's all kinds of things that can take place that we, we want to develop, we want to build, that God comes under our terms. He'll answer under my authority, so to speak. Under, like, yeah, I want God in my life. But I also want this in my life, too. You get what I'm saying? Maybe you can do like a group text or a group call with God. But what on the, that third party, if it conflicts with God, God's not going to have a part of it. There's some things in my life I had to discard. I had to get rid of. Because the clarity... Of the phone call that I got with God wasn't as clear because I had that sin in my life. He wants us to call upon him. But it's important for us to come and call with true and sincere intentions. 
Secondly, we can come to God. Matthew chapter 11 and 28 says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Have you worked hard? Are you burdened down and heavy because of some of the things that's going on around you? God doesn't stand up here and say, Come, come unto me. But under the current circumstances, stay six feet. You can come, but you got to keep your distance. God doesn't do that. He says, come. And his coming, if I could illustrate it this morning, would be something beautiful. He would say, Gary, come. And I think that coming would be him putting his arms around you and embracing you in such a way that you've never been embraced before. Come. Come unto me, all you that labor and heavy laden, I will give you rest. John chapter 6 and 37 says, All that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will no wise cast out. If you come this morning with all sincerity of your heart, God's not going to be like, hey, I've seen what you did this week. You can come, but you can't come. Or you can come, but you've got to keep your distance. This person, you can come all the way. He's not going to cast you out. His arms is big enough to gather each one of us up this morning. That we all feel the fullness of his embrace and the fullness of his love. As our pastor shared last week, he loves Every single one of us. He doesn't love any of us more than he loves the person next to you. He wants us to come to him. If we come to him. He will embrace us. But the thing that hurts me a lot of times is it's hurt myself. It's oftentimes... We don't accept that invitation. We're going to, we got a couple more point of another point, and we'll drive through this, and we're going to have an opportunity of an invitation. Whether you're lost, whether you're hurting, maybe you're heavy laden, maybe you're burdened, the invitation will still just be the same. Come. Yeah, he'll come right where you're at. But there's something about. Him saying, come to me. And when you're experiencing and you find him there, it's just a wonderful thing that takes place. And I'm thankful for that personal moment that we get with Christ. There's nothing like it. Thirdly, the compassion and the care of God. You know, we, we, we look throughout the Old Testament and the New Testament, and we see that there was 400 years of silence. Between the two. You know, and I'm sure there was many questions that began to rise up, many doubts that began to be produced, and that silence was broken through the coming of Jesus Christ. And that He would come, He would walk as we would walk, He would suffer, He would be persecuted, and He would die for us, for our sins. I'm read, I'm reminded of a book that I read once by an author of Max Licato, he said these words, that the God of all creation left his kingdom above and came down close enough to touch. I think this God of all creation, the God of all the universe, left his throne above and came in the form of his son, Jesus Christ, and dwelt among us. Mary could touch his hands that would one day be pierced with nails. The very feet, as he began to count his toes, would be nails driven into them. The disciples would come to know him personally. Not as you and I personally know him, but they could physically touch him. That's how close he came. As I think about this, you know, we, we refer to it as the babe and the and the virgin, it's a virgin birth. And when you think about those things, I know we think about Christmas. Some of you probably already got your decorations out. Anybody already got their decorations out? Be honest. Nobody? 
You've thought about it, right? But he came near enough to touch. The Bible says that Jeremiah, Jeremiah 23 and 23 says, I, Am I a God at hand? Said the Lord, and not a God far off? I'm sure many in the midst of this pandemic has asked this question. Where is God? How come he's so far from me? He's still close enough to touch. We can call upon him. We can come to him. And he'll have compassion and care for us. 30, Psalms chapter 34 and 18 says, The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart and saveth such of a contrite spirit. Is your heart broken this morning? He will come to you. You can come to him. You can call upon him. He's nigh. He's close to you. You might think that nobody else cares and nobody else knows. God knows. And he says, I'm right here. I have not distanced myself from you. I'm not following the social distancing guidelines. I will come into your home and I'll meet you exactly where you are. John chapter 14, 18 and 19. I will not... <clears throat> says, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you yet a little while, and the world seeth me no more. But ye see me, because I live, ye shall live also. He will not leave us comfortless. And one of the greatest, one of my favorite scriptures, so to speak, is in Ephesians 2 and 13. It says, but now is Christ Jesus, who was sometimes ye who were sometimes afar off, are made nigh by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace, and hath made both one, and hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us, having abolished in the flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in the ordinances, for to make in, in, in himself of twine one new man, so making peace. Now about me... That, we, that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby, and came and preached peace unto you, which were afar off, and from them that were nigh. For, though he, for through him both have access by one spirit unto the Father. Now, therefore, ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God. You know, and I think about a household. I know we've been limited to the ten rule for gatherings, but when it comes to God's house, there's still room for one more. There's still room for one more. And as we think about this separation, you know, our sin separated us from God, and it was way further than six feet. Our sin separated us from God. But when Jesus came and he died and shed his precious blood for our sin, we were drawn nigh to God. We who were far off, the Bible told us there that we were brought nigh because of the blood of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Isaiah 43 and 2, it says, When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the waters, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. Maybe you're here this morning, and maybe the life in general is rushed in like a flood, and it seems like it's taking away everything. In your life, your peace, your joy, your contentment. Maybe some of the people that you love dearly, it's taken. Maybe there's some relationship that's been severed that has brought about a, a great emotional strain or discomfort in your life. And you feel like overwhelmed and flooded by these things. He says, I will be with thee. When there are passes through the waters, when there are walks through this water, I'm going to go with you. I'm reminded and in closing, you know, I'm reminded of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego when they went to the fiery furnace. Guess who was there with them? 
And I have a strange feeling that he was already in there. Guys, I'm already here. Come on in. Furnace is fine. Jesus met him there. I'm reminded of David as he went up to face a Goliath. Maybe you have some great giants in your life that you're about to face or have faced in the midst of all this, and you feel as if you're going to be alone. But I believe that when he merely picked up those stones and that sling, that there was somebody else doing the slinging. Someone greater than David that knocked that giant down to his to the ground. I'm reminded of Daniel when he went into the lion's den. I'm sure Daniel had a great stature about himself, maybe, and maybe he could close the mouth of the lions, but I believe somebody else was there. He came to Daniel. I remember Paul and Silas as they was in prison. And in the middle of the night, they would begin to praise and sing songs unto the Lord, and God came in in the form of an earthquake and shook that place. And the chains fell off those men. And then the bars and the doors opened up. Maybe you feel imprisoned. He can come to you and he can literally shake the foundation of your life and begin to set you free of so many things as you begin to praise him. I'm a member of John on the Isle of Patmos. He might have felt isolated from God. But God began to speak through him and began to write the words of Revelation. He wasn't alone. Neither are you alone. I am reminded that in the midst of our lives, many could say a great deal. And saying, well, God's not real. God's not around us. If he was real and alive, that none of this stuff would be taking place. I beg to differ. Because there's been a lot of times in my life when God had all rights to distance himself from me. I was a mess. And I'm still a mess. And there's probably people that six feet ain't enough. I joked with people at work when we first did all this. And because where I'm a lead, I have to announce some things. And I'm like, hey, you know, you got to keep six feet. And if you're ugly, you got to keep 10 feet. <laughs> you know, 10 foot pole. I'll get in trouble for that. I'm not supposed to tell jokes. <laughs> but I can assure you before Christ. Six feet wouldn't have been enough. But you know the way God sees distancing? The way we should see distancing with our relationship with God, that six feet's too much. He sees the exact same thing for you. Six feet's just too much. I want you right here. We cannot pray enough. We cannot study enough. We cannot assemble enough. He says, come. Call upon me. Come to me. Six feet's just too much. He welcomed the hurting. He welcomed the broken. He, rem he welcomed the sick and the lame. When the leopards come, he said, let them come to me. When the lunatic and sore vexed, when nothing could do nothing with them in the Bible. I reminded of one that said, no man could bound him, no, not with chains. He hid himself in a tomb. Maybe there's some things this morning that you're struggling with, and maybe you've hid yourself from the people around you. But you don't have to hide yourself from Christ. He'll come right where you are. He came to the lunatics. The blind, the lame, he said, don't keep six feet. Come to me. Six feet's too far. I want you right here with me. I want to encourage you this morning that 
I trust and believe without a doubt that God intended to meet with you this morning. Maybe you asked at some point this week, God, I need you. Where are you at? With a hand raised, with arms wide open, he says, I'm still right here. Maybe you got up this morning out of a routine of just coming. He wants to meet with you this morning. And we say things like, don't get up in my space. Maybe there's some things in your life that doesn't need to be in your life. But because it's in your life, it's keeping you away from God. But it's not keeping him away from you. He wants to be with you. And he wants to be closer than six feet.